Welcome to Just Asia, AHRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Civilian casualties in wake of Philippines martial law. Burmese government should investigate video of military beating ethnic rebels. Judicial developments upholding rule of law in India. Families and civil society demand return of disappeared in Bangladesh. Commemoration of Indonesian political reform in 1997-98 disappearances. Fewer places to pray in Burma. Three urgent appeals from Indonesia, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Welcome to AHRC TV's Just Asia. I'm Annie Lin. This week, Just Asia begins with civilian casualties in the aftermath of martial law imposed in Mindanao, Philippines. One ethnic Moro resident was killed in North Cotabato due to military aero bombings and at least two farmers were illegally arrested in Maragusan, Compostela Valley. President Duterte declared martial law in the southern island of Mindanao last week after 100 Muslim fighters laid siege to the city of Marawi. Two extremist groups there have pledged allegiance to ISIS. According to human rights group Karapatan, on May 25th, around 240 government soldiers conducted aerial bombings targeting Moro communities at least 100 kilometers away from Marawi city. As a result, more than 1,000 residents had to flee their homes. Their concerns that martial law will empower the military to supersede civilian authorities in enforcing the law. In particular, it could increase human rights violations against leftist activists, indigenous leaders and environmental activists who have long been targets of military abuses, said Human Rights Watch. Early on Friday, President Duterte jokingly told soldiers in the South that they could rape up to three women each. Such comments vindicate the fear that the government will not only turn a blind eye to military abuses in Mindanao, but may actively encourage them. Next, rights groups are calling on Burmese authorities to investigate a video showing men in military uniforms viciously beating handcuffed detainees suspected of being ethnic rebel fighters. The video surfaced Saturday morning and quickly went viral at a time when peace talks between the government, military and rebels are ongoing in Burma's capital. This is the second video in recent months that show military officers torturing ethnic groups. For decades, Burma's border regions have been plagued with insurgencies led by ethnic minority militias fighting for greater autonomy. Although Aung San Suu Kyi has made signing a nationwide peace deal a priority of her government, there has been limited success so far. Suu Kyi's civilian government has little control over the military, and Suu Kyi has repeatedly defended the army's operations in western Rakhine state, where tens of thousands of Muslim minority Rohingya fled a brutal military crackdown. Despite international claims of crimes against humanity committed in the crackdown, Suu Kyi has rejected calls for an independent fact-finding commission. Meanwhile, the Burmese military last week said its own probe had found no evidence of atrocities committed by its troops, although one soldier was punished for stealing a bike. In India, three welcome judicial developments have upheld rule of law this week. On Tuesday, a CBI special court granted bail to prominent BJP leaders LK Adwani, Yuma Bharti and Muli Manoha Joshi for charges of criminal conspiracy in the Babri Masjid demolition case. The leaders appeared in court for the first time in this case. In the Bilkis Bano case, the Supreme Court refused to stay the conviction of police officer R.S. Bagora, who was convicted earlier this month, along with four other policemen by the Bombay High Court. The High Court reversed the trial court verdict that had acquitted them earlier. The Bilkis Banner case took place during the 2002 Godra riots in Gujarat when the 19-year-old pregnant Banu was raped and 14 members of her family murdered. In the ban on cow slaughter, the Madras High Court granted a four-week stay on the government notification prohibiting the sale of cattle meant for slaughter. The rules for those looking to sell or purchase the animals have been made stricter. The notification has drawn strong opposition from the states of Kerala, West Bengal and Tamil Nadu. Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan stated that the central government cannot decide what people in Kerala eat and the notification could destroy the secular fabric of India. Moving to Bangladesh, 
People's outcry for the return of the disappeared loved ones is daily rising. At a national seminar held on May 26th during the week of the disappeared, victims' families and civil society activists demanded the whereabouts of disappeared persons from the incumbent government. Civil society group People's Movement for Democracy hosted the seminar at the Engineers Institution in Dhaka. Writer Fahad Mazar presented a keynote speech while Mamadur Rahman, acting editor of Daily Ahmadesh, and several other prominent citizens spoke in the seminar. As law enforcement agencies in Bangladesh consistently commit the crime of enforced disappearances, families have been holding press conferences to reel the plight after the disappearances of their loved ones and to demand their return. The police and paramilitary have disappeared 14 people in May 2017 itself. Among the 14 victims, two were later released alive, one person was shown arrested, and 11 victims' whereabouts are still unknown. During the week of the disappeared, the Rapid Action Battalion RAB, picked up a 16-year-old student, Mubarak Hussein, from his school on May 30th. The paramilitary officers falsely claimed to be development workers and insisted the headmaster of Akron High School call Mubarak Hussein and four other students to the school, which was closed on that day. The plainclothes RAB members drove away with Mubarak, leaving a cell phone number with the headmaster for updates. The paramilitary force members claimed they were taking Mubarak for investigation into matters related to Islamic militancy. On Wednesday, 31st May 2017, an officer of RIB has claimed that Mubarak was shown arrested in a case registered with the Kotawali Police of Rangpur District under the anti-terror law. However, he has not yet been produced before any court. This indicates the direct involvement of the law enforcement agencies in enforced disappearances. Mubarak's whereabouts remain unknown since the RIB picked him up on Tuesday. In more disappearances news, victims' families in Indonesia organized events last week to commemorate 18 years of political reform since Suharto stepped down in May 1998. A peaceful protest was organized in front of the presidential palace in Jakarta, as well as a public memorabilia ceremony. Students from Tritakshi University and others also organized a protest to urge the government to resolve cases of past human rights abuses, including disappearances. Family members of victims of the 1997 to 98 enforced disappearances had high expectations that President Joko Widodo would investigate the cases and search for their beloved. President Widodo had made this search part of his election campaign promises, but until now, nothing has been done. Moreover, President Widodo has been reluctant to issue a presidential decree establishing an ad hoc human rights court into the 1997 to 98 disappearances. On the contrary, the president has publicly flaunted his close relationship to the alleged perpetrator of the disappearances of student activists Prabowo Subianto, former commander of the Special Armed Forces. With President Widodo seeking Prabowo's support to strengthen the government, the investigation of the disappeared student activists remains stalled. As the month of Ramadan begins, Muslims in Burma are increasingly restricted in where they can pray or study their faith. In Taketa Township, Rangoon, two Islamic schools were closed last month due to pressure from a Buddhist ultranationalist mob. Human Rights Watch had called on the government to immediately reopen the schools, labeling the move a craven capitulation to mob demands. Buddhist ultranationalist groups claim the shutdowns are lawful as Madrasa leaders signed a document in October 2015 agreeing not to use the schools for prayer. But residents of Taketa Township said they have received permission for several years to pray there during Ramadan. Despite appeals, the schools have not been allowed to reopen and there is fear they will suffer the fate of other madrasas shut by the authorities, which remain closed. For Muslims in Taketa Township, they will now have to walk several hours to make it for their daily prayers this Ramadan. The closest mosque is a 30-minute walk away. The Burmese government has placed harsh restrictions on the construction or renovation of religious structures as well as limits on the practice of religion.
finally, the Urgent Appeals Weekly features three cases from Indonesia, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. In Indonesia's South Sulawesi province, the Seko indigenous people were arrested, detained and forced by the police to accept the development of a hydroelectric power plant on their land. In Pakistan, four persons were disappeared from Badin district in Sindh province after their arrests by men in uniforms. Lastly, in Sri Lanka, Mr. Jayalat Kandambika Chaminda was extraditionally killed on April 27th by police. No investigation has been carried out. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on these and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia forward slash Just Asia. Thank you for watching. And see you next week.